I'm gonna be honest, gang, we've been struggling. I dipped my toe into the pool of spellcasting and it didn't go well. So let's dip our toes in a pool of something else. Blood. If there's an enemy in this game that loves blood, it's the Sanguine Noble, and you can get all their weapons without fighting a single Remembrance boss. Secret starting class. And I'm just gonna spoil it for you now, this one's pretty good. To watch me have fun live, follow me on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon for exclusive videos full on on episodes on niche topics. Wow, wow, wow. But more importantly, please subscribe. It helps us out in a major way. We put our blood, sweat, and tears into this. Well, at least two fluids. His blood. 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 Starting off in character creation, I wanted to make a penguin to be a penguin noble, but that was too hard, so I gave up. Then I jumped off a cliff, and in the game, that's how you get into Limgrave. Kale would sell us the crafting kit, but the tree sentinel is a bit distracting. We'll just have to come back later, when he's less busy. Save Alex, obviously the weapons we'll be using have some sick ashes of war. And Alex is nice, even the sanguine nobles like Alex, they worship a blood god. We can actually get the first tool of the nobles kit from Nerd Juice, and since we start with an arcane based bandit, we have a buckler. Welcome to Perrytown, nerd. I'm not gonna miss a single one. Oh, that little guy. I wouldn't worry about that little guy. Reduvia acquired. Let's get that lore, baby. Jagged dagger with a distinctive curled blade, carried by the noble servants of the Lord of Blood. This dagger rips the flesh as it enters, inflicting blood loss with sickening efficiency. A proud testament to the success of its vicious design, this weapon is perpetually coated in blood. Damn, a knife that's difficult to clean makes sense. Most of the good ones aren't dishwasher safe. Per the rules of secret starting class, now that we have one of our tools, we gotta drop trow till we get the rest of the gear. How far away could our clothes be. Oh, that, uh, that sucks. Patches is thankfully very easy. Hitting his shield with our bloody blade beams might seem silly, but the shield does not reduce bleed buildup. I guess it's like attached to his arm or something. He kind of dies. And now we have the pickle recipe. If we have to be naked, let's go into the high road cave and get something from it. The golem is pretty easy. Our dagger has a bonus crit damage. Oh, that sucks. Oh! <laughs> We even get another one. Oh, what the fuck? The first crit did so much more. Oh! Whoa! Sorry. Whoa. As a survivor of that fight, we get the blue dancer charm for more damage while we're at low equip load. It's variable, but we'll probably be getting around an 18% boost. Let's go to church and ask for forgiveness for all the ludity and murder. Then get some better physic tiers and imagine being noble in Fortnite. I've actually never played Fortnite and I think it'd be a kind of a funny video if I had to play it until I got a victory royale. Branching out to new games for content is scary though, so encourage me so that you can imagine me in Fortnite. Dragon Barrow next, little grave robbing, and we'll go right for the sleepy dragon. I've been dropping this from runs without bleed, but this one has bleed, lots of bleed. So we can blend up that mama dragon and get 40 vigor before we go into 40 Faroth. That's why it's called 40 Faroth, because you should have 40 vigor before you go inside. Learning in next, we'll head right to the lobster man and carve him up with a knife. If you need a knife for your lobster, you cooked it wrong. It should not be that tough. Accidentally jumped on Raya. We're gonna stop bullying now. She's very sensitive. Jump off a bridge, grab a key, and warp back to the bridge to Bellum. Raya Lucaria cave time for some somber stones. Almost get bubble bubble blasted by the stone diggers, but we're good. Crystallion isn't a problem. It's also not a necessary fight, but it's one that's very easy and warps us out faster than if we didn't fight him, so fudge it. Wow, we're already in Altus. Get a sacred tier. Avoid a sanguine noble. We are not ready to fight one of those yet. Then level up the Reduvia to plus three. Now we are ready to fight a sanguine noble. In the Writhe Blood Ruins, there's a guy down here. Wow, he is a chump with a big long helic? That cannot be how it's pronounced. Yeah, I was wrong. There's an S sound, so it's he licks. Well, he licks ice cream in hell now, and we get a he licks of our own. Time for lore. Ominous piercing sword with a winding blade carried by the noble servants of the Lord of Blood, designed to bore into flesh, causing severe blood loss at the wound. The extracted blood trickles gracefully down the length of the blade. That lore is terrible. It's a bloody sword wielded by servants of the Blood Lord to make blood and get blood coming down from the tip to the base. Is that Kyle Gordon? <laughs> Did I do Kyle Gordon at the end there? 
We do not have the stats to wield it yet, which is wild. Didn't we kill the dragon? How do you not have the stats to wield a simple helix? The economy is in shambles right now. So abandon K. We have to fight the clean rots with the Reduvia, which is fine. This is a great weapon. It's one that the Sanguine Nobles use, so there's no issue using it. But since it kind of hard carried us through the Arcane only run, I do want to use the Hellas for most of the run. Golden Scarab, acquire more money. Go. Blood money. If you want to Mogwinify anything, just put blood in front of it. We're going to fight Mog's brother now, Margit. Wow, it's a blood feud that we're settling. Take a shot every time we say blood and you'll die. So drink water, maybe? Or blood! Backing up and throwing the blade beams is great. We're basically a spellcaster. One final boss, Knight's Cavalry, falls down. Ouchie, ouch. Now, we're ready to start licking. I've decided to stop bullying Raya, and she takes us back to her place immediately. Remember guys, negging is weak shit. If you're just nice to a girl, they'll happily take you home, especially if you murder people who wrong them. But hey, maybe you don't want maidens. Maybe you're fine at home with your hand, and if your hand is looking like this, take a day off. This one drops a somber stone four. There's a six inside Volcano Manor Town. There's also a snake that knocks me off the elevator. Fine, let's fight. It drops a somber stone five up the elevator. Godskin noble time. It's an easy boss, weak to bleed. It's jump is super easy to dodge. Hey, pretend you didn't see me get hit by the jump. Focus instead on how we can kind of poke him through the column as he does the rollout. Sometimes the game janks us. Sometimes we jank the game. Oh, we haven't talked about the very cool Ash of War yet, Dynast's Finesse. It's a dodge back and you follow it up with a stab forward. It doesn't stop you from getting grabbed. Guess how I found out. Whoops. Through the fog gate, and we'll use a little bit of everything here. Crit boost? Don't mind if I do. A rune arc? If you insist. And somber seven? Yeah, we're really here for the somber seven. Then a trip to Dragon Barrel, and we're up to plus nine. Let's show this off against a boss that can't bleed. Oh, that's not, that's not a great idea. It's the putrid avatar. It drops hella runes hella fast and moves hella slow. This is the first non-spell run we've had in a few weeks, and I gotta say, gamers. I'm so fast, you couldn't even comprehend how fast I am. This feels pretty good. Pickle after the putrid avatar for even more runes but we're so fast let's put a three minute timer on the board and get grail grail can bleed the hellas has a pretty good amount of stance pressure so this goes so smooth just knock him down and slash his eyes open we don't even have to eat another pickle the one from the putrid avatar is still going but for a real boss we have to fight gatekeeper gostock Good news gamers, we now officially have a crafting kit. Yay. Radon time, summon some pals. Some of them matter more than others. Sorry, but believe it or not, the nobles play favorites and our favorite is Okina. He stacks bleed up with us, so once we break the stance, it's all over. Poor guy doesn't even get a phase two. Danger Path of Stormvale, and if we can one cycle Radon, surely we can one cycle Godric, right? Well, no, we're too strong. He hits his phase transition before the stance break. During that animation, he has extra defense. I mean, he doesn't last long in phase two, but he does get to have a phase two because we're too strong. At this point, we're just sprinting to the consecrated snowfield to get the drip. So forget every other thing we can do, let's go into Radon's hole. The mimic tier goes great, it always does, but this one goes even better with our Ash of War, catching those annoying rolls. Oh, short detour to Gilka. Very, very short detour. I need more damage for the gargoyles because I fucking hate them. Why are their legs so skinny? It makes it awkward to actually land hits. As a fan of trading, hanging out underneath them is a bad place to be. You're just gonna whiff their little toothpicks while they send out a flurry of baffling hitboxes that hit way too hard for this point in the game. Fia's Champs and Siluria are after this. Astel is after this. Why do these two hit so hard and have full status immunity and a gank? Ugh. Just gotta slow it way the hell down, focus on the dodging, and we'll get the win. It wasn't even that bad. But nothing in this run goes that bad, because it's pretty good. These ants get popped, believe it or not, the giant drill sword is good at popping balloons. Fia's champs get absolutely shrecked by the Ash of War. It's so good at catching rolls on NPCs, and they always throw out more rolls than a Texas Roadhouse. Can't forget that Texas Roadhouse. They play the song every 30 minutes to remind you, which I think technically qualifies as torture for their employees. Some of these Texas Roadhouse employees get a bit rowdy when there's three of them, but it's no big deal. I'm pretty happy with this little needle, because it's a very big needle. It pokes through the royal capital very quickly. First through an 
or tree avatar for the Lord's Rune. It's kind of messed up how this one drops the Lord's Rune, just like the one all the way in Elf Ale. I'm not complaining. More early game huge rune drops, please. Number one hope for the DLC is it's accessible from the start of the game, drops some Lord's Runes, and has a somber seven. Don't so precious little. Duelists are fun to duel, who could have guessed? Oh, also, obviously, Duelist Spirit Ash. Make a regular one with Grave Glovewort and a rotten one with Ghost Glovewort called, like, Dumpston, the pants pooping duelist or something. Now, the Godfrey Shade can't bleed, but he can be stabbed. Stabbing's pretty cool. Morgoth can bleed, so even though he should be harder, he is not. He is much easier. Phase one goes sloppy, but I'll be honest, when Morgoth makes a little messy mess, we start cooking. We mix the blood in with his vomit, and ugh. Mm, yuck. Oh well, at least we won. Sorry about the four Biden lands jokes. It's just meant to be a silly pun to make a boring area of the game more fun. Elden Ring isn't a political game. No Souls games are political. They're just about dethroning a figurehead who is letting the world fall into ruins so they can maintain power. Or a already powerful figurehead intentionally ruining the world to get slightly more power when they were already super goddamn powerful. Obviously this resembles nothing in the real world. Mountaintops of the Giants were going right for Nile and his castles whole. His ghosts don't bleed, we just have to poke them twice. He even goes goes for the big Omega spin blaster attack that makes him really sleepy and just stand still, like a dumbass. We're stacking bleed and stance pressure, get a nice little crit. We'd have to be really greedy and stupid to die here. Whoops. Come back and fight him again. His ghosts don't bleed, but we just have to poke them twice. He even goes for the big Omega spin blaster attack that makes him really sleepy and just stand still, like a dumbass. We're stacking bleed and stance pressure, get a nice little crit. We'd have to be really greedy. Wait, don't be greedy. We did. First Halig Tree, then kill an old man for the second Halig Tree medallion. Turns out if you want a generational transfer of wealth, the best way to make that happen is... Anastia gets all stabbed and cut up. This Ash of War is amazing at taking out NPCs. Finally, we make it to the Sanguine Noble that's going to give us our gear, but we're still naked, so we get a little messed up by the bleed. Still less than 10 deaths, and once we get back in there and get our revenge, we finally have the drip. But while we were so focused on dressing up, we missed so much of this game. Let's do a little cleanup. And how would a Sanguine Noble clean up a mess? Wow, late for school, let's make it fast then. Nobody saw me fall off that elevator, but if you have elevatophobia, look away. God, is that really the word for fear of elevators? Feels pretty lazy. Red Wolf of Radagon gets redder like paper in a shredder, just bleeding like a dog that's been stabbed. The first metaphor was better. Renale is a one cycle, that shouldn't be a surprise. Phase two is another few hits to win. Overall, that was like six minutes for all of Raya Lucaria. If you graduate in six minutes, the school was fake. Hopefully it wasn't too expensive. After lighting some torches, we find ourselves face to face with our ultimate enemy, skinny legs. We keep missing these spindly little moose legs and it's like 20 feet away from the gargoyles. This moose skipped leg day and that's why it can't get any moose ladies. These moose think all moose ladies want you to have broad moose shoulders and a moose six pack. No, moose ladies want thick moose thighs and a round pronounced moose ass. <laughs> Oh no, we haven't done the optional Ronnie quest that is mandatory. Carry a Manor used to be my favorite level, but having to run through here every time kind of kills the fun. Almost as fast as our Hellas kills Loretta. Oh, hi Ronnie, get the knife, get the statue, go to the Incel River Main and just run through the bottom of Nakron. Nothing for Phalanx Demon's Holes today. We don't need anything up there. Just cut a nice 11 minutes out of the run for you. Let's fight Estelle and just kind of poke him in the face and avoid getting hit. He can bleed. I didn't think he could bleed. That's cool. Sometimes we get hit, then we get bit. Just a bit. Suboptimal moment here. We went back to the round table hold and had to fight Ensha because we haven't burned down the Erd tree. Run killer, it's over, time loss, shut it down. Shut it down! Maybe we can make up some time on the fire giant if we don't take a hit. God, weapons, they're so good. You press an attack button and when an attack comes at you, you press a dodge button. It's just wow, 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 so good. The bleed helps carve through some of Fire Giant's big boy HP, much more than the crit does in phase two. We even have a crit boosted talisman and that's it? That's nothing. 
I really don't get it. We're sticking a drill needle into an eyeball. That's the worst thing I can imagine. Well, not the worst thing, but I don't like how the worst thing sounds. Time for some infighting. Let's battle a Sanguine Noble in Mogwin Tunnel so we can get a few more rune arcs. Absolutely shrecked. I don't know that these are all that much better than they were in Altus. Moog without the Eleanor tier is a risky move, but he's weak to bleed, so it shouldn't be all that bad. Honestly, the cell's on me. I just kept getting hit by everything, and it was still pretty close. Next time, we take a few less hits, get a big crit, and it's pretty much over. Other than, you know, getting blended by the phase transition. That's always pretty bad. Losing three flasks isn't ideal, but we really mess him up with the bleed. This is our boss? This dude sucks. Okay, maybe we should find a new boss, like Rykard. Didn't grab any regen or a combo boost, we're just gonna raw dog it through the magma. Hey gamers, don't raw dog the magma. The Hellas is long enough that we can actually get hits off pretty easily in phase one, but in phase two, Rykard gets a fun invisible wall under his body that stops us from going into the place where we could hit his body. His body is the wrong size. I've learned enough that when he starts going for hell phase, you just need to back up and run away. And he does it a lot, and it lasts a long time. Rykard enjoyers, you're sick. You need to talk to someone, someone who isn't me, because if you enjoy Rykard, we can't be friends and I can't be your therapist, but I can't be your therapist because that'd be pretty irresponsible of me. I'm saying the boss fight's obnoxious, but we don't die there. Instead, we die in the liturgical town because we were too tall to hit the archer. Server Anakin, I have the high ground. You underestimate my power. Embarrassing. Swag jump through the Halig tree, then we fight Loretta, and I'll be real, I got too cute with it. I'm sure the dodge is really good. Like, I'm actually sure that the dodge is good. You get 20 iframes as opposed to a roll's 11. It's almost twice as good as rolling. But the follow-up takes some timing and finesse to get going. That's probably why they call it Dynast's Finesse. I just didn't practice it enough to get a feel for it good. Next time we come in here, we just use the R1s and the R2s. Really good. Heavy thrusting swords are great weapons, and the normal attacks are pretty great even if the Ash of War would be better if I wasn't bad at the game. All the optional bosses are down. Now, let's go finish the game off. So give the blood, blood, challenge of the stuff, give them all the... For Ramazula is looking extra tornado-y today, let's get Bernie in to distract one of the godskins, specifically the Apostle, while we go for the Noble. It's Noble on Noble action. Apparently heavy thrusting swords are noble behavior. Google nobles thrusting each other on your work computer to find out more. Bernie did a nice job on the Apostle, so we can just 2v1 the other ones as they come in. It's pretty free. Swag jump again, then it's time for the bird run. Our blade beams from Reduvia aren't long enough to hit them, so we just gotta raw dog it. Don't raw dog a bird. That sounds like a way to get salmonella in places you don't want salmonella anywhere. You don't want salmonella anywhere. Time for the Draconic Goatee Sentinel. It's a hair easier than it is with spells, since we can use our high stance pressure to make sure that he's taking it on the chin. The bleed also really shaves off his HP, but we get another stance break before we get another bleed? Weird. Enough jabber jawing about that, let's fight Malika. We unfortunately can't keep the stance pressure up enough to get a break, but we can safely hit and dodge. Because weapon. God, I love weapons. Easy win. Speaking of easy bosses, if you have a weapon that's longer than a popsicle stick, you can beat Gideon by walking forward and hitting R1. You'll stagger him out of his spells, occasionally bleed him, and just win. It's nice to have an easy one. I know I literally put this on the poll to be easy, but I'm still glad it's been easy. Godfrey is a bit more of a fight, and we almost bite it to the fissure, but we don't have to bite down when Daddy opens up the big crack. We live. That'll give us time to run around, get a few safe pokes in, because the weapon is so big, using the R1s will get us a stance break right at the end to win with a crit. Weapons are so good, kids. God, I love weapons. Carrion Study Hall is so much better when you just quit out and the Perceptor can't shoot at you. It would be ideal if you just didn't have to go to the eastern side of Lernia for no reason, after having to go to the western side of Lernia for no reason, but oh well, east side, no biggie. Hug Fia and then we can fight Fortis Axe, but it's hard to thrust his toes heavily when you can't lock onto them. He can bleed, so we'll just take hits from the AoEs, we can't see him making, and eventually poke enough for the win. One sack's done, let's go to another sax of the placebo Sidhu variety. This one is weak to piercing damage, which is what the Hellas does. Isn't that nice? He can also bleed, but we're having a lot of trouble getting in. We also had trouble baiting him into the wall, so... That's gonna kill me! That's real! Wait, we lived? 
We don't have any flasks though, so one stray hit from the Aftershock AOE machine and we're toast. But it doesn't happen. We just poke the tail enough that we win. Never punished. Let's grab the Halig Drake plus two for Radagon. It's a pretty fast pickup from the Moog Swamp, especially since Moog is dead, so the white masks won't invade us. Damn, a predatory incel convincing his followers to put on white masks? Good thing there's no real world equivalent to this. There are a few other talismans we could grab. We have room, I just don't want to do all of Alex's quest. That means he gets to live and keep eating snacks in the Radon arena. Radagon time, he can't bleed, so that's not great. We're also getting hit with a lot of strays, but are we? It's wild how much better the rest of this run has gone, so this feels bad despite the last few Radagon fights being... Uh, bad. But this isn't great, and we only have two flasks as we hit the Elden Beast. The stance pressure is really nice. God, aren't stance breaks wonderful? We'll get extra damage from our crit, and then the Elden Stars comes out. I've gotta wait till that's over to heal, because we have one flask left. We almost get invisible walls during the rings, but it's fine. Still a first try win. Against a boss, that invalidates the best part of the weapon. God, I love weapons. I love you, bitch. Oh my god. I ain't gonna never stop loving you. Bitch. Only Melania left, and I'll just take a six minute detour to hopefully save more time on the fight. It's running through the sewer, which is only slightly less stinky than fighting Melania. There's somber stones on the way down. We fight an omen instead of just running up a ladder for some reason. Then hit up the Lindell catacombs at the bottom, which is going to try and gaslight you. Simply don't get gaslit. It's the first rule of Elden Ring. Did you think there was another rule first? You're wrong. There's never been another rule. Why would you think that? Esker is a badass sanguine boy. He skates with two open knives in his pocket! So when he falls, he gets all stabbed and cut up. He gives us the Lord of Blood's Talisman for 20% more damage after a bleed. The best way to beat Melania is to beat her so fast before she beats you. Elphiel time, I've always pronounced it Elphiel. Why would you say I said it differently? Tried to finesse through the waterfall, but honestly, I just like walking forward. It works and you don't get turned around when you turn the camera. Max out the Reduvia. Yeah, I kind of forgot we had that, but it does have uses here. Dragon Crest Great Shield next, that'll give us 20% more physical resistance. Gonna be very useful for Mel. And the first attempt goes, okay. We're using the R1s. The bleed is solid. The pokes are safe and um, kind of bad because they're good. It makes her ducky dance really fast, and that is not a great thing to try and avoid. There are certainly ways to avoid it, but they are tight windows, and failing them is gonna hurt. But even with the first attempt, we made it to phase two. When the onion comes out, we reduvia her up as much as possible to keep the bleed status building and the stance pressure. Not the best stance pressure, but you spell enjoyers would think this is the fucking prelate hammer. The ducky dance gets worse in phase two, though, and that's a wrap on the first attempt. We could go grab a spirit ash, but I would probably scoop up the albernerics. They're the ones who team up with the sanguine nobles mode. Most, but group spirit ashes are basically just an all-you-can-eat buffet for Melania. We're gonna be on our own here. It's really not all that bad. I mean, it's hard as shit. It's Melania. But eventually we get it together. Focusing on the pokes is ideal. The Ash of War can hit after a dash stab. She has weird follow-ups and super armor on her other attacks that make it kind of tricky to pull off in other places. Did you know with a light roll, you could just roll out of the ducky dance? That was a fucking lie. Bleed is enough to bring the damage back in our favor. Honestly, she just uppercuts a lot. It's a great punish window, even when we whiff a crit. Big oof. Also, we just miss a lot of normal attacks. Hills make the Hellas perform a little weird. Probably because it's not a Hillis, it's a Hellas. Let's go to phase two. Hit some blade beams into the onion. Obviously knives are good against onions. Have you ever tried to use a rapier to do meal prep? Little stress, my finger pushed the stick in, so we ended up crouching instead of sprinting away from the tornado. Maybe she just won't see us. It's another uppercut for another crit and a bleed crit, which looks cool, but isn't actually all that great. If you get the bleed on the crit, you don't get the boost from Lord of Bloods. She goes into another onion, we hit her again, and then she tries to onion again, but we kill her in the air. Makes a weird little Zelda sun on the ground. That's pretty funny. At five hours and 45 minutes, we killed 37 bosses and died 19 times. It is so much faster and less painful than spell only runs, but that's the power of bleed. Only ends up in A tier, but that's an A tier without spirit ashes. And we have a lot of builds in S tier from before we did all remembrances. Both the weapons we used are amazing. The lack of armor hurts us a little bit, but even though we were almost naked, it's still pretty great. Also, I feel like if anything, the ceiling is higher. I was bad at using the Ash of War. If you're good at it, this would be even better. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon to support the channel and get a few extra videos, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next episode.